Hello and welcome back. Thank you as always for tuning in and especially for your commitment and dedication to your practice. Feels like I say that every time. Everything that feels repetitive here has a definite purpose. And I do hope that you get the magnitude and the importance of your commitment to doing this practice. Because we learn this course as we learn all spirituality, actually, by doing it, by putting it into living practice in our day-to-day -day lives, however mundane they may appear with our freaking email lists and our inbox that's full. Mine's waiting for me. As soon as this video is over and posted here on YouTube, I've got a whole business to operate and it's full of email. <laughs> Can anyone relate? Yeah, right? I mean, we have our lives and no matter how mundane they may be, it's where we really learn the spirituality. Yes, we can get inspiration from a talk like this. And I do hope that you get that a lot of it, yeah. always. And we can gain some understanding of the material, but it's in putting it into practice in our lives, moment to moment, email to email, forgiveness opportunity after forgiveness opportunity. I mean, you'll be scrolling your social media feed at some point today or this evening. Forgiveness opportunity after forgiveness opportunity is people post things just because they can. They've got a global platform with which to post whatever they want. <laughs> One forgiveness opportunity after another. Really, anything that's not wholly joyous is just that. It is an opportunity for forgiveness. And amidst all of this, we learn the best by putting it into practice, because then our experience demonstrates to us. It shows us, or if you prefer this language, it proves to us that these ideas are true. And they are. However fanciful they may seem, however outlandish, weird, or wrong, truth is never wrong truth is true. <laughs> we could end it right there. It's not wrong. Truth is true, which, by the way, does not mean that you have to believe any of it. In fact, we have not. We have not chosen to see things as they are. We've chosen to see them as they are not. For example, we've chosen to see things as they are not, so what is not real appears to constitute our reality. We've made it so, and therein, as always, lies our real power. Having made this dilemma, mess, quagmire, yes. round of suffering, Having made it, we can unmake it. We can choose to set it aside, and the choice is yours right now in the present moment. How do you do it? You, you exercise your power of decision. Choose love instead of fear. Choose forgiveness instead of blame. Hmm? Choose light instead of darkness. Choose God instead of the ego. Choose the Holy Spirit instead of the ego. Choose yourself with a capital S over self with a lowercase s, little ego self, individual self-sustaining survival unit, competing for what we deem to be scarce resources. Ha ha. Yeah, no. Mm. Uh, this is a choice that we all make. As always, your inner teacher invites you to make it. Always. Mm. So what we're looking at today are some of these ideas that sound obvious, 
I mean, they do. So many of the ideas as expressed here in A Course in Miracles sound so simplistic that we tend to think that they can't possibly even be true. That just sounds too easy. It sounds too simple. So we go off and we complicate things, which is what we've always been doing. And that's what makes this conversation necessary in the first place. It's what makes this course even necessary is the fact that we need to learn it. <laughs> we do. So with this in mind, let's just take these simple ideas, and rather than doubt and disbelieve them, put them into practice. And you could actually, if you wanted to, put them into practice even while you didn't understand them. Even harboring skepticism and doubt, just your little willingness to put them into practice right now is enough for your inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, to rush in and run the show and guide you. Just that little willingness. So you have that? I know you do because you're watching. And I know you do because you're interested in spirituality when so many of these, our, our brothers, these things, do not appear to be interested in it at all. And they may even be related to you or your friends, and they may even think you're nuts. Now let them think whatever they will. What is that for you but a forgiveness opportunity? I just keep forgiving. We see all this illusion here in the world, quite frankly, because we want to. We want to see separation. So as long as we cherish it, so shall we see it. As long as we cherish our illusion of individuality, so long will we see individuality. We'll see one person pitted against another, groups of people pitted against other groups of people, each demonizing the other, believing that their side is right, drawing lines in the sand and doing battle, whether it leads to the extreme of warfare or not. We're actually undergoing warfare in our own mind any time we lash out and judge any time we blame, any time we act with unkindness, any time we listen to the ego instead of the Holy Spirit, our inner teacher. So with all of this going on in our mind, the more we study the Course, the more we realize that this is exactly what we need, a Course in Mind training, because, in fact, this is where the action lies. It's where it's at, in a manner of speaking, in the mind. You'll have noticed, or if you're new, you will notice, that this Course is not concerned with effecting change in the world it's not concerned with affecting change, in other words, on the level of form. It's not out to make us younger, hotter, and sexier looking. It's not out to get us more money, though we might get that as a result of practicing these principles. It's not out to get us a hot, sexy, romantic partner and a lifelong committed marriage, though you might get that from practicing this material. Whether you do or do not is not the point. The point is to change your mind. It's not to effect change on the world of form. It's to change your mind. Now, I keep referencing the world of form in that way, because it's what appears to us. It's what we've chosen to see. So we work with what we've chosen to see. How do we do this? We let the Holy Spirit do it. 
We allow our inner teacher to guide us and show us what to do. And our part is very small. It's only to let him in and then follow his guidance. This is loving guidance. It's patient guidance. And never will you be asked to do something that you absolutely cannot do or that it is not the right time for you to do. Why? Because your inner teacher knows exactly where you appear to find yourself here. That's why most of us get what seems like a very lengthy process in our spiritual journey, where things appear to happen one event at a time, one forgiveness opportunity at a time, one thing unfurls at a time, and we get one realization at a time. It's because the Holy Spirit is kind. You may feel like you want to speed the pace up. Well, great. If your inner teacher knows that you're not ready to have the veil ripped off you, because that would plunge you into existential terror, he's not going to do that. Quite frankly. So we have discussions just like this. We have moments where we remind ourselves over and over again to practice. And the 1,000th time that you hear the exact same idea could very well be the time where it really connects. And boom, that proverbial light flips on, you get it. We appear to see untruth, illusion, because that's what we want to see. That may not go down perfectly well. All right, no problem. I mean, really, we want people to cut to the chase here in the world, especially in the business world, where we simply can't stand if someone equivocates at all. We become instantly defensive and judgy really judgy of people that don't seem to cut right to the heart of the matter. Well, let's cut right to the heart of the matter in spirituality, shall we? If you have had enough dancing around, I invite you to stick around. There are many doors, of course. A Course in Miracles does not own truth. It does not monopolize truth. Truth is not property to be monopolized by any tradition at all. By any. So you may open and enter as many doors as you wish. Yet something in you i.e. your inner teacher, as you right here, right now. So if you want to awaken, really, truly, I invite you to stick around. What we're saying here is this is not the only mechanism by which to do it. However, it's extraordinarily direct. And if you want that, and I know you're ready for it because you're here, stick around. Some of the ideas may seem shocking. No problem. Let them sit however they sit. When something connects with you, it's your inner teacher speaking to you. We see illusion and suffering because it's what we have wanted to see. It's what we want to see right now, so we see it. What happens when you change your mind and want to see peace instead? What happens when you want to forgive instead? Now, you see things very differently. This is the point. Practicing this course is much like being in a movie theater. Imagine a, a dark movie theater where we're watching a film. We're watching a procession of images go by on a screen. And we're sitting there enraptured, or maybe not, maybe we're bored out of our minds, I, I don't really know, or annoyed, or you find the movie funny, or it's gripping, it's hot, it's romantic, it's full of action. However you find the screen, 
you're watching this movie, the person next to you could be having a completely different experience. You may love the film. They may hate it. But there you all are watching. Perhaps you're eating popcorn and enjoying the ride. Or perhaps you're not. Something very important and directly relevant is happening here. We know when we sit down in a movie theater that the images on the screen are illusion. We know it. We know that that imaginary drama that's playing out on the screen, the screen, we know this imaginary drama is not true. It's not real, but we choose to believe that it is. We do this every time we watch a movie. We do it when we read a novel. We do it when we turn on the television and Netflix and chill. We do. So we're sitting there. What can you do in a movie? If you need to go to the bathroom, for example, or if you can't stand the darkness inside anymore, and you know that it's sunny outside that exit door with a clearly marked sign in red lights, exit. You can walk out into the light. It's a choice. Similarly, what you can do, especially when you realize that you have access to the projector room, is you could choose to switch the film. Mm. Enter A Course in Miracles. Seeing a disturbing movie, change the film. You don't go about attempting to make changes to the screen itself, the screen shows whatever is reflected upon it, whatever is projected upon it. So you don't go attempting to carve up the screen or draw imaginary pictures on the screen and manipulate that. Instead, to change the film, to change your mind, you go up into the projector room and you change the film. And as you see a happier movie, you begin to realize you're not really sitting in a movie theater at all. What theater? What film? You begin to realize something that we often say, but we have to repeat. We're perfectly at home in God where we have always been. Truth is true. We don't have to believe that truth is true. In fact, we can actively insist that it's false, but it's still true. And we don't have to like this, but spirituality is for grown-ups. So if we really want to awaken, we've got to bring all of our darkness to the light. We have to be willing to bring all of our illusions to truth. Along the way, we'll see people who are not doing as we're doing. For sure. I mean, all it takes is a simple internet search to see that people aren't doing as we would have them do. So here's something directly relevant. Any time you become annoyed at what someone else is doing here in the world, their own illusions, their delusion, if you want to put it that way, when you become annoyed and fail to forgive them, you are, in fact, failing to forgive yourself for the exact same thing. One of these simple truths is that there is only perfect oneness. What does this mean? Your brother is you. You're not a body. 
you're not a body. You appear to have separate bodies. That is simply an apparition. It is. It's a simple appearance. Your brother is you. What you see is your own movie screen. Your mind, which by the way is our mind, one mind, is the the film and the projector. When your brother acts out, that is an opportunity for you to forgive him. Whom do you forgive when you forgive your brother? Exactly, yourself. When you withhold forgiveness, from whom do you withhold your forgiveness? Precisely, from yourself something that takes repetition and are getting accustomed to here as we study and practice this course is the notion that there is no one out there. There is nothing outside you. We're seeing our own wild and crazy movie, which is filled when we recognize it with opportunities for forgiveness. So what do you do? You forgive what appears on the screen of life. Anything that is not wholly joyous is precisely this, an opportunity for forgiveness. Anything that you see on the screen of life that is joyous is symbolic of our oneness. It's symbolic of our strength as the Christ, it's symbolic of our own limitlessness as the Son of God. Our own radiance and magnificence. And if it is not symbolic of that, it is an opportunity for us to forgive. So we do it. Where? In the mind. We don't have to call somebody up and say, hey, I forgive you for your f bomb list tirade on Facebook the other day. Yeah, that, that political rant that, that you posted, which you always post, I forgive you for that. You don't have to call them. You don't have to message them. There's no text or email required. We do forgiveness where it belongs in the mind. We change our mind. We change our mind in a very broad sense about everything that we experience. We flip our perception right side up. It is upside down. We flip it right side up through our study and practice of A Course in Miracles, through our study and practice of true forgiveness, especially the practice of true forgiveness. We begin to see things as they really are. How are they? Well, let me leave you with this notion. Ideas leave not their source. You may capitalize the S, idea. You, idea. Idea, thought of God, yeah? We're known as the thought of God here in A Course in Miracles. And one of the very, very frequent refrains of this course is this very idea. Ideas leave not their source. Thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. You're the thought of God. Where are you? Go there and do that math. It's the only math test that there is with this course. There is no long division. <laughs> there is no sine, cosine, tangent, no calculus. You do not need to contemplate and calculate the area of a curve. One, that's the math test. So simple, yet so apt to be overlooked. Well, welcome back. One, thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. Where are you? So with this practice of this course, with our true forgiveness, we see forgiveness where we've given it. Where we forgive, we see ourselves forgiven. 
Remember, your brother is you. You see forgiveness where you give it. All right. So I thank you, as always, for tuning in. Well, if you're new to this material, welcome. If you're a long-time course student, welcome. These videos are really for everybody. They are. They're for every single one of us. Because we never know, even if we're a long-time student, you just never know when that light is going to flash on, when something's really going to viscerally, experientially connect for you. So what goes on here is... Several of these videos appear each week. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. We'd love to have you join us. That's the prompt in the corner of your screen over here. Click that. It'll say subscribe and go for it. Several videos appear again each week, and your questions are always, always welcome. Spirituality is all about deep self-inquiry in the first place, so it is quite natural that questions would arise, especially about this course, because again, it aims to flip our perception right side up. It is upside down, or this course would not be necessary. So we need to accept that, for starters, and then accept help in flipping it right side up. If you have questions, please ask, and I will talk to all of you very, very soon.